everybody to iAfrica Media, the biggest and fastest growing media company on the African continent for all things IK. I'm your host, Obi Malope, all the way from South Africa. And today, it's one of the most special interviews that I get to do because I'm with the awesome Mauna. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm yourself. Very well, thank you. I met Mauna a couple of years ago through the South African Optometric Association, but most importantly, I met her through the work that she does at this amazing, beautiful, groundbreaking, trailblazing optometric practice known commonly as Brooklyn Optica. The, if I had to have a practice, this is the template that I would use to have an optometric practice. The benchmark, the standards of excellence that have been set by you and the team, absolutely amazing. And you don't rest on your laurels. You, you're so invested in ensuring that every single component of the business is operating at the highest level of excellence. And so it is an absolute pleasure and an honor to be representing Africa Media today and sit with you and talk about, you guessed it, dispensing. Mana, I know you, but a lot of people who are watching this don't know who you are. So let's forget about this camera for a moment and let's just talk as two colleagues. Who are you? How did your journey in dispensing become or start? Thank you, Abby, um, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, like you said, we met a couple of years ago. Um, my journey is actually a, a little bit of a funny story. Um, I started studying at the University of Pretoria. Um, I studied medicine, ah. and then in my third year, I decided this was not really that what I'm up to or um, that I have a passion for. And then my dad said, um, well, seeing that you're not studying anymore, you either coming home or you need to find a job. Okay. Uh, so I found a job very quickly. Wow. And I started with Linda. And wow. that is now 21 years ago. Wow, um, I did not know yes. that. So um, my first job was as a frontliner, um, working in the practice. Okay. Um, and I knew nothing about optics, so I had to learn. And I think that was my first introduction into the model that we as a practice uses, um, that there's a, a separation between your front line, okay. um, your dispensing and your optometrist. Okay. Because your patients come to your practice expecting the best possible spectacles and outstanding service delivery. Um, and we want to give that to them. And so 21 years ago, we started growing the practice. Sure. Um, it was two optometrists. Um, there wasn't any qualified dispensing opticians at that stage. Okay. Um, Urena was the first, my colleague was the first one to qualify, first as a lab technician. Okay. And then she did the dispensing course. Sure. And the rest of us followed. So at the moment, uh, we two optometrists in the practice, full time optometrists, and four dispensing opticians. Wow. Um, three, <laughs> yeah, three is um, already qualified and has been qualified for some years. And the last one, the fourth one, is um, still a dispensing opti um, optician student. Um, she'll probably qualify, or she's already qualified, and we're just waiting for her HPCSA qualification. Wow, wow, um, that is absolutely yeah, incredible. So that's how the journey started. Um, so from frontline, I went to um, a little bit of administrative work, um, practice management. Um, and I did the dispensing on the side because we felt that it was important to be uh, qualified and recognized with the HPCSA um, for the qualification. And that's how the journey starts. Wow. Um, <laughs> so how it works in our practice is uh, we've got a dedicated frontline store. Okay. Um, and I think the frontline is, in, in most practices, is the backbone of the practice. I absolutely um, agree with because that. Because they greet your patient, they make the patient feel comfortable. Um, they're the window to the outside. True. But people still perceive them as their frontline store. So if you now asking the same person that greeted the patient, um, asked him to fill out his form, made his appointment, to help him choose a frame, they start wondering, what does this person ah. actually know <laughs> about frame selection? Firstly, which we all know is very, very important, um, because the frame selection in influences how you're going to see with your spectacles. If they choose a frame just purely on fashion and they don't get the right advice, 
that's that friend's going to slip down. That friend's going to hurt them behind the ears. Um, if the weight is not um, distributed evenly across the nose. Sure. That's all stuff that influences patient's experience when he needs to decide if he likes his glasses or not. You can have the best prescription and the best test in the world. Yes. If the patient doesn't work out with a pair of spectacles that sits comfortably, he knows exactly what type of lens was prescribed, uh, why it was prescribed, how it fits into his working environment, what he does every day. Um, does he work nine hours on the computer? Does he work on a laptop? Does he have Absolutely. two screens? Absolutely. Um, is he using his iPad and his phone more? So all that kind of lifestyle um, influences is really, really important in deciding what lenses are you going to give to your patient, as well as the frame selection. So um, it's not a by the way with you guys. It's not a by the way. You, you have separated those functions. We've separated those functions. Because a lot of practices would be thinking, but Magna, I can always teach, and this is the optometry speaking, they could always be like, but I can always teach my frontline staff to know how to select a frame. But I've spent a lot of time in a lot of practices to realize that staff don't actually get training on those type of things. No. Uh, and practices that say they do a lot of staff training to ensure that their staff are equipped, they're not training their staff every single month on those aspects of dispensing, which are so vital and critical, as you have highlighted. Yeah. So what advice would you, would you then give to that optometrist who say, you know what, I just, I just can't afford to be employing a dispenser who is sole responsibility is dispensing. What advice would you then have to that person who realizes and identifies the need but is thinking the financial implications, implications of it, I'm a small practice, might not necessarily be uh, worthwhile to me, mm -hmm. but deep down they know that the long-term uh, benefits of it will outshine out, the short-term sort of like challenges that will be there because you are saying that this is something that you guys trained you one year ago mm -hmm. already where you started and there was not even a dispenser. And now, you sit, 21 years later, you're sitting with four dispensers. So you never grew the optometric tea. You grew the, uh, the, the dispensing tea. Uh, what advice would you give to someone like that? Um, I, mean, I think you have to look at the, the bigger picture. Okay. And exactly like you said now, how we evolve. Um, if, because dispensing, and I'm not talking about dispensers now, I'm talking yes. about the the act of dispensing. So you've tested, you have your prescription as an optometrist, and now if you really want your patient to have the best possible vision, you need to spend at least another 20 minutes to 30 minutes as an optometrist, discussing the type of lenses, um, what the patient does on a daily basis, um, does he need computer glasses, does he need multifocal glasses, there's a varied um, amount of multifocal lenses available. The technology changes on a daily basis. So for you to keep up with all the changes in the market sure. in terms of lenses um, and the extra time that you spend all of that. <laughs> on all of that, you're losing chair time. So true. So if you're going to work out as an optometrist, you can see X amount of patients a day because you have to spend between half an hour and an hour on every patient, and then you get the lucky patients that takes two hours to choose a frame. That's <laughs> two and a half hours out of your chair time. Whereas if you can focus on a comprehensive eye examination, and um, most um, optometrists have, do now have diagnostics or therapeutics, yes. focus on the primary care, the pathology, and then hand over to the dispenser, to the dispenser who has the knowledge um, it's different in-house training um, to in terms of optics. Yes, you can you can train someone to choose a frame, but can you really train someone to do the physics behind lenses? Yeah, yeah it's something completely it's, different. It's, it's a completely different thing. Um, I mean, you guys as optometrists know the amount of optics that you do um, to actually get to the script. Now, the same applies to. What is going to happen when you put in a multifocal lens? Um, what small little changes can you make? You can adjust the stair guide. Um, you can bend, change the frame angle, uh, the platoscopic tilt. That's not 
something that you can just teach someone with training that happens, like you say, once a month, maybe once every six months. months yeah. um, it's a it's a qualification. Yeah. It's actually something that you spend a lot of time with, that you really, really learn um, the basics behind it, sure. the optics behind it. And that's what makes your script successful. Um, so it's a whole process. So what, what we do is our optometrists only test. Sure. They write down the prescription and then there's a handover phase. Um, we hand it over to, or the optometrist hands over to the dispensing optician. They would say, this is what we've discussed in, um, while testing. Um, the patient needs multifocal or he would need computer glasses or, and it's given to over to the dispenser. Wow. And the dispenser then decides what type of lens is best suited for the patient's lifestyle. We first discuss lenses. Um, okay, because really? that's very interesting because these are my glasses. Yep. I bought them here. And one thing that I've realized, if I could just separate where there is a dispenser and where there isn't a dispenser in terms of the optometric practice, is if a person, most practices, or a lot of practices, usually have this buy one, get one free in the practices. But in practices where there's actually a dispenser, there isn't a buy one, get one free as the approach to the patient. There is, here's your problem. This is your visual uh, experience at the moment. These are the visual requirements. These are your visual expectations. And these are the solutions that you have or that we have for you in solving your problems. So where, the, where there's a dispenser, what I've noticed is that, especially like with you guys, a person could leave the practice having three or four pairs of spectacles because that 20 minutes or 30 minutes more where a dispenser sat down with the patient thoroughly explaining to them that on this pair of frames, this is what you're going to be having. This is what you should expect to see with this pair of glasses. The second pair, this is how you're going to be using it. The third pair, the fourth pair and so forth. So the you're increasing your... Your, your, your revenue. Your revenue. You're increasing your, your, your sales opportunities that you have with the patient simply because someone who is actually well equipped, well trained to discuss key elements of that management solution that you're recommending is properly done. Whereas practices that don't have a dispenser, it's like everything gets put on that main pair and the patient is busy negotiating with the staff member on, but I can't afford this, I can't afford this, and I can't afford this. They end up not even prescribing what the optometrist discussed with the patient in the test room. And this becomes like a spare frame that they use the time that this one is broken. Yeah. But where there's a dispenser, a it's mindset like it's completely, around, is around. completely different. Is that what you're finding happening yes. in your practice? And not this is, um, what I think is you, you're hearing, because you've got time, what the patient's expectations are in terms of what he wants from his his pair of spectacles mm. and then you can offer him the solutions and yes he might tell you so you're going to tell him this is what we would like to give you in terms of what you need and what your expectations are and he might at the end of the day come back and say you this is now a little bit too expensive or will my medical aid pay for yes, it yes. but you've planted the seed so if, even if you can't get the product that you originally wanted you also have the knowledge to say, I understand that you can't do this now, but here's an alternative. If you, we don't have to go free for multifocal, we can go one step back, um, or I can't afford the multifocal now. So, okay, if you can't, then we can see, maybe we can give you two pairs. Okay. You're gonna have a computer one and you're gonna have a reading one because your distance is still right. Um, but you, so you've got the option because you've got the knowledge. knowledge. To, a, and a frontline person will not necessarily will be not able to do that. The patient is going to tell him, well, I can't afford the multifocal now. And then that's where it's going to get. Um, so and no it gives you options. It gives you options. Um, because you've got the product knowledge, um, you can interpret and say, okay, you can't do this, but we can offer you this. Okay. Um, and I think that's what makes the difference. Um, is to also... To, to give the patient all the options. Um, but you, you don't start, if you if you go into a car dealership, you're not gonna offer him your um, Kia um, Figo that's this small. 
um, if you can actually buy a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> so you start with the Mercedes Benz. And if he tells you, I go and get to the Mercedes Benz now, then, well, I can offer you a BMW. <laughs> uh, then we go to Volkswagen. Um, so, but you have to have the product knowledge. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I think the different optometrists and dispensing opticians do have that knowledge. The optometrist doesn't necessarily have the, the time, time. Uh-huh. to spend with the patient. So, in our experience, a successful model is if the optometrist tests and hands over to a dispenser. Long term, I think it would, if the optometrist feels that they can't afford a, a dispenser at the moment, then you have to, if you want to grow your practice, then you, you're, as an optometrist, need to spend that extra time with the patient. Um, and then you're going to see spending that time and discussing the lenses. It's taking away time from... It's taking away time from what that you could have... And you see that patient. someone can actually come and do this full time. Someone can... And will add so much value to the practice. Will add the amount of value. Because they can also do practice management. Um, as part of the course, there's a, there's a whole lot that this Benzer can do extra for you. Um, that will free you to see more patients and to spend quality time time with your patient. That's very interesting. So from what I understand is in the follow-ups there, a patient collecting their spectacles, whether it's single vision, multifocals, it's all done by the dispensers. Yeah. Not this thing of a person is wearing glasses for the first time, even though it's single vision, and, and it you action. just get it in over by the front line stop. Because a lot of practices I've noticed they do that, where the only time when they will call the optometrist to double check if the frames are fitting correctly is with multifocals, when a person is coming to wear the multifocals. That's the only time where practices will, or the staff member will be calling the optometrist to make sure that the fit is right. But whether it's a dispenser, everything that happens yes. with the dispenser. Yes. Whether it's a pair of single vision glasses, uh, multifocals, whatever type of management solution that was prescribed, the dispenser goes through the entire routine. Time, Whereas the optometrist doesn't have the time because he's busy, he or she is busy in the test room with the patient. Yes. Another one is coming to collect. So I, 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 I see what you, what you say. Yeah, and I think the other thing that's also important, like you say, it's a whole process. Um, so if we've done the discussion of the lenses. The other thing that we've realized um, is patients or you as a professional don't necessarily want to dis- discuss pricing while you're talking to the patient. You're talking about his disease and the pathology, and everything that you now have, have to switch. Now you have to switch. And now you have to go into this is the going prices to the lens. <laughs> it's easier if the professional part says professional. Like you that. discuss the lenses, and then go. It's a natural pro- progression to. So this is the product. This is what it will cost you. And you work out the quotation. And you get your informed consent and everything like that. that goes with it. I think also what you you say now that what um. The collection, okay, so you, you're going to discuss the fashion, you, he's accepting it, then it gets ordered. Um, when that pair of spectacles that you've ordered comes in, it's also very important to check that spectacles. Is the prescription correct? Mm. Is this what I've ordered? Um, is there any stress on the frame that the lenses must cut too big or too small? Is there prismatic effect in the spectacles? Because that's all things that's going to influence your patient's vision. But most people, friends or jobs comes back, there's no time for anyone to check it because it's only the optometrist. Uh, he's fully booked today. So all the spectacles that gets delivered is going to be handed to the patient without being checked. Yeah. Um, and it affects that patient experience. It's because the, 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 the job of us in IK, it's not just to see how many pairs of spectacles we can give to people. It's actually how are people experiencing that, that those thing. pair of glasses for the because they have to wear for the next year. Yeah. So and you're, if you're not happy with it, you're going to put it in your drawer or you're not going to wear it, and you're going to say, you know what, I can't see with this pair of spectacles. And it can be a small little thing like a prismatic effect that was created, or the lens was fitted incorrectly. Um, everyone's human, so yeah. everyone makes mistakes. So every pair of jobs that comes in is not necessarily going to be 100% correct. If the PD is out with one or two, um, it takes hundreds of patients and years for us 
as optometrists and dispensing opticians to get to a point where you can actually measure a PDA 100%. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you've got all the electronic it's, equipment. I haven't found one typolometer or fancy iPad that measures it as accurately as if you do it by hand. <laughs> um, and it, it makes a difference wow. because if the PDA is out of three, it's going to um, influence the patient's experience. And he's not going to say, I had a bad test. He's going to say, I can't see with my spectacles. And in the long run, what's going to happen? In a year's time, when he has, has to come back, mm. he's not going to come back because he wasn't happy with his spectacles. Um, Interesting. So Interesting. You, you're also creating loyalty with your patients because you have an excellent customer experience with the product that you give. That is so true. And it's, that is so true. So now it's been checked. The patient gets a personalized call to say, your spectacles has arrived, you're welcome to come and collect not a, it. Not a text message that yeah. just goes in. You have to come, <laughs> unfortunately, you have to come in to collect your pair of spectacles. Um, he comes in, patient, we've got trays, um, we call the patient, we go through to a dispensing room, and that pair of spectacles gets fitted for the patient. It gets adjusted again to make sure that there wasn't any um, realignment or changes while it was well, in the lab. Uh, we fit it behind the ears, make sure that it's 100% fit, and check that the patient is happy. Um, you re-explain if it's a multifocal or computer um, accommodative sport um, pair of lenses, how it works, that they know exactly what to expect. That they don't walk out of here and they're not 100% they're not sure why, why am I seeing this? Um, but if you've explained it beforehand, they know what to expect. Yeah. And there's no, the adaptation is so much easier. Um, okay. And people end up coming back and saying, you know what, you, this works really well. I like that. But um, I'm a trader and I've got six screens and ah. this wide. You know what? Your multifocal is not going to work for that. Because there is limitations, like we explained to you. He knows that. So he's going to come back to you and say, you know that Your limitations you talked about? It's actually happening. It's actually happening. So mm, I think we should go for something that's gonna, that I can wear just when I'm working well, on my screens that's around me. Um, I like and that. Then, you, then you're upselling, then you're selling the second product. I like so that. if you work out, yes, the cost of hiring a dispenser versus the what, extra time that you've got in chair time what they bring in um because i could imagine things like selecting of the frames uh, the stock that you guys have it's done by the dispensers yes. there uh, it frees up the time that the optometrist would normally just have a sales rep coming in uh, from the particular frame companies or contact lens companies and they just tell them, oh, this is what's in trend, this is what's in fashion, this is what the new styles that are there, and the optometrist just goes with whatever that the sales reps are, uh, are recommending. And my sales rep is trying to sell his product, <laughs> he doesn't necessarily know if the product is going to work. 100%, so, or the type of patient that you are seeing, all of that. Type of so it means you guys, you ladies as the dispensing team, are contributing so patients. much more, because then you get to know, I'm, I'm sure you guys are constantly being trained or going for training pertaining to fashion trends and you will even know more than the sales reps themselves yes. because you understand the technical aspects of the, frame. the frames and yes. it, it might look nice and that's the styles that are coming in it's not big. but it's not functional so you guys are in a better position to determine all of that you mentioned earlier on about taking someone into the dispensing room and as i walked in and every time i come in it says you've got you've got the, the test rooms mm -hmm. And you've got the dispensing rooms, which are also separate from where people are selecting their frames. Because I found that, unfortunately, in a lot of practices, front desk is here, page, uh, frames displays are right there, and you're selecting a frame and you're discussing pricing and everything with the patient that has just selected the frames right in front of everyone. Right. And some people are very uncomfortable discussing that. So your medical aid will not off, uh, pay for this and your glasses are going to cost you 11,000 rands. To have that type of discussion in front of everyone, it can become so uncomfortable. So the element of having separate dispensing rooms 
I could imagine that's adding so much dynamics. It, it does help to it. a lot. Um, people feel the moment you start, and remember, you're discussing his personal information, his vision. Um, he doesn't want to discuss it in front where the other patients are waiting. It is, it's his privacy. And the same thing when you, when you start discussing price. Um, people want to feel comfortable. They want to feel they have a relationship with you. They know you. Uh, they trust you. And it just helps that uh, for us. Um, we felt that it's very important to have that separation. Um, they're sitting there. They feel private. They feel that you're spending time with them. It's not rushed. Um, they know they're going to come back and they're going to fit their glasses. It's most of the times it's going to be the same person that um, discussed the lenses with them, that yeah, helped them with the frame yeah. selection that's going to fit the spectacles um, when they collect. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way, but we try as far as possible. And you, you start building a, a relationship with that patient. Um, in a year's time, he's going to come back and he's going to ask, I'd like to see Avi because he helped me choose my frame and discuss my lenses when I was last year. And you built... Wow. It's, it's about relationship, like wow. everything um, do you, that works, it, yeah, and I mean, in your business, you know that as well. It's all about relationship. Um, be, people come back because of who you are. Yeah, yeah. Do you spend a lot of time between the optometric team and the dispensing team post the assistance of a patient? Do, do, do you touch base? Or is everything put on the file? Do you guys discuss the cases together as a team to say, you know what? Clinically, this is what we were finding, and from a dispensing component, this is what we ended up going with as the final management of this particular individual. Do you guys discuss a lot of cases a lot, um, or how does that work? In terms of training, we do. Okay. Uh, so we would say, um, let's say a patient would, would have come back um, with a problem, mm -hmm. or he felt... Um, he had a question about his multifocal, for example. Um, then we would discuss afterwards to say, we've we found that with this specific lens, it's better to use, um, let's say, let's drop the seg out with one lens. Okay. Um, so that type of feedback, as we get them, uh, we do discuss as the whole team um, and implement it as part of the training to say, okay, so if you're all working with this specific one, this is what we, the feedback that we've got from the patients, it would be better if you adjust it this way or that way. And um, so there is, there is um, communication. Or you would go back, um, you, we would say, um, let's say the patient says he doesn't want a multifocal or he wants um, a single vision, but he's going to use it for his piano, uh, while playing piano and he needs to really sheet music. So the changes to that script or the adjustment to that script, then, we would go back as a team to the optometrist and say, okay, this is what we need, this is the adjustment or the vertex distance of the frame that he chose um, differs this much from the distance that you tested on between the parapter. Um, we need to adjust the script. Wow. So there is, in terms of that, there, there is communication. Wow. And we we do check the cards um, before we file them to make sure that everything is 100% correct, and uh, that it's going through the whole process, um, and if there's any, anything that we pick up, we use it as training or discussion between each other. Man, how do we get more practices embracing dispensing and not turning the dispensers that are qualified into glorified frontline stuff? How do we, what can, what can be done from an industry point of view? I think I mean, the, the biggest thing is, um, you can, it's a difficult one and we've, we've tried to, to address it now in a little and to say that we more than double one, double zero one. We more than an eye test. And whether it's an optometrist or a dispensing optician, um, take the time to spend with your patient. Um, that it's not, we're not just refractionists. Mm. Um, and I think if that's your outlook, um, it's going to follow naturally. Okay. Um, because you're going to realize that you yourself can't do everything you can't. alone. You can't. It's, you just can't. And if you surround yourself with the right team, um, your practice will grow. And I think <laughs> we were talking about it the other day. Uh, we had a, dis a dispensing webinar. 
and um, it was an excellent speaker, but he went into a lot of practical details about dispensing. And a lot of people said, but I didn't know that. Um, because I think dispensing is such a small module of training that normally gets, that happens as part of your curriculum. Yes. Um, whereas it's a three-year course, in course in of its diploma. Own, yeah. uh, um, so when you start realizing that what you can achieve if you spend that little bit more um, time on the patient, um, it's going to be, you're going to realize it's worth it for you. And I think the other thing is for dispensers um, to say, this is our scope, this is what we do. Um, I'm not a front line. Um, show me, give me a chance and I'll show you what difference I can make in your practice. That is so true. That is so true. That is um, so true. Because I remember myself when I was still in practice, I found myself almost spending just amount, the same amount of time selecting product, discussing products, um, making sure the patient understands the product as I was on testing. on testing. And when I got to that level, I realized that my 45 to an hour's examination is now all of a sudden an hour and a half. And what that particular practice that we did, we got a third optometrist mm -hmm. in so that but there was two test rooms, so that at any given point in time, one was free. One was free to be able to handle mm. all of those uh, components. But eventually, the the one of the lab technician had to go and do uh, further his dispensing or brush up on his dispensing knowledge, so that we can hand over to the technician yes. who was because there was two, so that they can be able to do more of that. So I absolutely agree with you that once you have that long-term vision of the practice, what you want to build, the kind of optometry that you want to practice, mm -hmm. you realize that the patients deserve more and the only way to give them more is by upscaling how we are giving yes. them the service, whether it be your clinical work, whether it be your, your dispensing work, whatever component of the business that requires you to elevate it then becomes a priority to the, to the people. And mm -hmm. that's how, I guess, like you say, we will be able to move things in the direction yeah. that they need to go. Wow. Yeah, and I think that's that if you if you speak to um, practices that have dispensers and what difference it made for them, um, you you realize it's a it's a natural process. Um, if you want to grow your practice, and we all want to grow our practices, you don't want to say on the same see the same amount of people every year, uh, you want to grow. Um, yes, it's a clinical skill and you, you spend time discussing everything with your patient, but it's also a business. 100%. Um, 100%. And you have to pay your rent and you have to pay the salaries. <laughs> and so but you have the, to grow. But, but the team, if you have the right people. If you have the right team, then it all comes together. Wow, wow. Guys, you know what? Uh, we do a lot of training uh, to a lot of optometric practices. And one thing that I can say to you, we even... Uh, from the side of Vision Straight, we actually wrote this in one of our books. We said there is the practice manager. Your practice manager is not just your frontline worker. There's the front team, there's the sales team, there's the dispensing team, there's the optometric team. So make sure that the team that you are building, the team that you are establishing for your business is strong. Because if you have the right team on board, you'll be able to take your practice to the level it deserves to be at. And dispensing is one of those key areas that you'll be able to fast track building those capacities that your practice can actually have and you'll immediately start noticing the difference in terms of the level at which your practice can start to function so whether you're sitting in angola whether you're sitting in morocco uh, egypt nigeria ghana kenya botswana wherever you are on the continent prioritize building that strong optometric team that has got the optometrists and the dispensers having separate roles that contributes equally towards the success of the business Mana, you were absolutely fantastic. Um, you, we need to have you doing more of this stuff and create some form of platform for you to collaborate with other dispensers who are already 20 years in the industry to be able to somehow create something that adds on to the educational platforms that are existing but that are more practical for people who are already in practice to pick up on, you know what, 
I want to have a practice that operates like that. I want to have a team that operates like that. So please start thinking about it because there's people sitting in Zambia who could benefit from understanding the dynamics that our automata dispenser can actually bring to the, to, the, to the practice. So hopefully we do more of this going forward where we can say, Mauna, this month or every second month, we're going to talk about this. We can create dialogue with other dispensers so that we can elevate the awareness on the impact that dispensing has on optometry and optometry practices. Thank, thank you so you much. I'll definitely think about it. Please thank you. Everyone, this was iAfrica Media. Thank you for connecting with us. Make sure to subscribe onto our YouTube channel and do connect with us on all social media platforms. We'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, we would love to come and talk about dispensing in your country. Take care, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Ali. <laughs> Thank you.